Well, hi, everybody. My name is Bill Davids. I'm professor and chair of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Maine. I've been here for 21 years as a faculty member and a chair for the chair of the department for almost eight. And what I'd like to do today is walk you through our labs. We're going to see several of them. These are all undergraduate labs. And if you come to UMaine, a significant amount of time would be spent in here. The first one, you'll see your very first semester. One of the hallmarks of our program is we have a very strong hands-on learning component. And you'll take a class, your first semester, called materials. And you know, who can name a material in civil engineering? Well, we're talking about concrete, we're talking about steel, wood, plastic, composites, aluminum. You actually will work with those materials. You will test them here in this laboratory in the first eight weeks or so of your very first semester. You'll be in here in a lab group of 15 to 20 students. That lab is taught by a faculty member with TA support, but not taught by a TA. None of our labs are taught by TAs. And you'll actually get to break things and you'll test the strength and the stiffness of these materials and that's going to supplement what you learn in the corresponding class where you learn about material microstructure, properties, stress and strain. And you'll get data from these tests in here and you'll sit down with your lab partners and you'll analyze the data and you will compare what you're observing with what you expect to see based on uh, the classroom knowledge that you've gained. And this is really a wonderful class, and it really builds a good sense of camaraderie among students. Again, all first semester students take the course, and you actually will be running these Instron machines right here. And we have, uh, you know, you'll be trained in that, you'll be doing it very safely, but it will be your job actually to instrument specimens and test them and gather data. And imagine someday, as a civil engineer, you're designing a bridge or a building. Do you care how strong and stiff the steel is that goes into that structure or the concrete? Absolutely, you learn those fundamentals right here. So, having said that, let's make our way down the hall. And I want to point out one thing as we go. There's a plaque on the door here. And this is the Rich and Jean Higgins Materials Testing Lab. And this is important for a couple of reasons. Every one of the laboratories you're going to see today is an endowed lab. It's either endowed by an individual, an alum of our program, or by a company. This particular lab is in, was endowed by Rich and his wife Jean. Uh, wonderful people and I love to point out Rich in particular not because he was such a great person or not only because of that but also because of where his career took him. When he retired he was uh, vice president for the Americas at Boeing Corporation. I'm sure you all know what Boeing is, largest airplane manufacturer in the world and we don't normally associate civil engineering with large airplanes but with an engineering degree you get so much background in so many areas and great problem solving skills that there's really no limit to where the degree can take you and Rich is a great example of that. And then second, it's also a great example of how strong our connection is with our alums and with companies here in the state of Maine. And that's something that all of our students benefit from, both while they're here and afterwards in their professional careers. Now, I think if you look around at uh, what I'm standing in front of and you see the mixers down there on the left, the orange mixers, uh, we are actually in the lab where we make concrete. And in that same materials class, you're gonna spend about the last six weeks of the semester right here. And if you're thinking about becoming a civil engineer, you probably appreciate how ubiquitous and important concrete is as a material. It's, it, you really can't escape two things as a civil engineer. One's concrete, the other's water, and we'll get to water in a little bit. In that materials class, in those last six weeks, you make concrete. You make it with the aggregate we've got here in the bins, with cement, and with water, right? And how many of you have poured concrete before? I bet more than a few of you have and you bought a bag of sacrete, more likely than not, put it in a wheelbarrow, dumped in some water, mixed it with a hoe, and then maybe a little sidewalk or a footing or what have you. Um, it seemed pretty simple. Actually, concrete is extremely complex. It doesn't harden or dry. It cures by a chemical process that's called hydration. Uh, there's always more water in concrete than is needed to get it to cure. Excess water in concrete <clears throat> evaporates and leaves the material. It shrinks, it cracks. All sorts of things happen. You learn about all of that in the class and how to actually design a good concrete mix. And then you come in here and you make it and you test it. And let's step back for a minute. Let's say we, we often have about eight sections of laboratory. There might be four lab groups in each section, each designing and making their own mix. So that's 32 different 
mixes that are made and designed every fall in this class. And maybe you test three concrete cylinders for strength. So three times 32 is 96. If you test 96 different pieces of concrete, how many strengths will you get? 96, right? It's a great hands-on demonstration of material variability. And you're getting that again your very first semester, one of the very first courses you take. So it's a wonderful introduction to the world of civil engineering and materials. And I'll point out that this lab actually is endowed by S.W. Cole Company. And uh, Steve Cole's an alum of UMaine. He founded S.W. Cole. That is the largest uh, geotech and testing firm, material testing firm in the state of Maine. Uh, and they're based right here in this area. They've got several offices around the state. That's a good example of, again, strong connection with our alums and with industry. Now we're going to move across the hall to the Goral Palmer Soils Laboratory. So I want to step back for a minute and talk a little bit about the curriculum. We define civil engineering as really having five core subdisciplines. There's structural engineering, environmental, geotechnical engineering, water resources, and transportation. In this, and you're going to take a required course in each of those five areas, and you'll have the opportunity to take electives in each of those, and, and multiple electives in many cases, should you choose. So you can really focus your education on what interests you most. But you're going to take a required course in every area. One of them is geotechnical engineering in your third year. So that's another hands-on required laboratory that goes along with a required class. So in the classroom, you've got your three hours a week of lecture, you're learning the theory, you're learning the basics of soil mechanics. Then you come in here, and to put it bluntly, you play with dirt. I assume you've all dug a hole. You've probably dug more than one hole. You've probably seen more than one type of soil come out of holes. Um, and you know, if we think about, from a civil engineering perspective, soil is very important. Everything we build is founded on the earth. And we don't want to build a large building or a bridge on some clay that's you know, really soft and, and squishy and is going to settle and cause a lot of problems. We want to build that on uh, you know, a good gravel that's very stiff. How do, we, how do we quantify that stiffness? Well, there are standard tests that we run for that. And in fact, you will be running them in this lab. You'll run compaction tests and study how the, the level of compaction material varies with moisture content and how you specify a level of compaction that a contractor must achieve in the field when they're building something. Um, on the other side of the soil spectrum, we have materials like clay. They're sometimes unavoidable. We must work around them, deal with them using different types of foundations. Sometimes we want to use them. Imagine you are decommissioning a landfill, capping a landfill. You wouldn't want to cap a landfill with gravel because when the water hits the gravel, it goes right through it and into the trash and into the groundwater and then it goes downstream in the groundwater and it pollutes somebody's well. We don't want that, right? Although you might have just created a job for your environmental engineering friend down the road, but we really don't operate like that. Um, but clay, on the other hand, is maybe an ideal material with which you'd want to cap a landfill because when water hits it, it runs off. It's relatively impermeable. If we look across here on the wall, for example, <coughs> there's a series of devices over here where we run permeability tests on soil. We'll have a soil sample, we'll subject it to a constant head of water, and we measure the rate at which the water flows through that soil. That tells us what the permeability is. That's an extremely important property of a soil. Uh, if, and when we're, when we're testing that, that can tell us a lot of things about how to model groundwater flow and how to predict uh, how, how far certain pollutants might move in the groundwater, how fast they'll move, what have you. So lots of fundamental information in here. Again, very hands-on, supplementing your coursework. Now we've moved to the Frank Woodard Environmental Engineering Laboratory. And I want to step back for a second and talk about the curriculum a little bit more. I mentioned those five core areas of civil engineering. One is environmental engineering, very important. In fact, we're the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And environmental engineering is an area where essentially you're looking at either preventing a problem from occurring or remediating a problem that has already occurred. And environmental engineering is a little different from a lot of other civil engineering subdisciplines in that it relies very heavily on chemistry and biology. Those are really the core background sciences. And you're going to take chemistry courses, at least one while you're here at UMaine. You've had a biology course in high school, likely. And in environmental engineering, you'll learn a lot more about those concepts, those sciences, and really how engineers apply them to solve problems. 
These are problems, water pollution, ground, surface water and groundwater, uh, soil pollution, air pollution, and we have a whole series of electives in environmental engineering after the required course, and several of them have required laboratories. So you're in here in relatively small classes doing benchtop level studies on different methods of remediation, and they might be chemically based or biologically based. And in fact, if you look around this lab, this looks a lot more like your high school chemistry or biology lab, for good reason. Now coming back to the curriculum, well, I want to point one thing out. So those five core areas of civil engineering, with our curriculum you have a tremendous amount of flexibility. Your degree, your bachelor's degree, is a bachelor's in civil engineering. But you have the ability to earn a concentration in four of those five core areas. And that will appear on your transcript. And you do that by taking three electives in a particular area and earning a grade of C or better. And those electives come after the required course in that core area. That demonstrates to a prospective employer that you have achieved uh, a high degree of expertise in a certain subdiscipline. It is on your transcript. The only area that we do not offer a concentration in is geotechnical engineering, simply because we don't have three electives in that area. Having said that, of course, we've got a solid program in geotechnical engineering. We have a required class and an elective there. So you have plenty of opportunities and you can supplement that in other areas. One thing we do require, and this is also important because your degree is civil engineering, you have to take at least one elective in three of those five areas. So we ensure breadth with your degree, but we also allow you to specialize and earn a concentration in one or more areas of civil engineering. This is the Kleinschmidt Hydraulics Laboratory. Uh, this was endowed by Kleinschmidt Associates, what I like to call the second largest homegrown engineering firm in Maine. They're based about 40 miles from here, and they're really well known in water resources, in particular in hydropower. And there's a required third year course called hydraulics, right? And what that is, is really the physics of fluid flow for civil engineers. It's a vitally important course. You might remember I said a few minutes ago, there are two materials you cannot escape as a civil engineer. One is concrete, the other is water. In this class, you learn about water. You learn the theory and the physics in the classroom, and you come in here and you play with water. The sorts of things we do, for example, we have a flume here where we can bring water into the left end, different flow rates. We can change the slope of this flume. We can put in impediments to flow. You can measure the rate of flow, you can measure pressure, you can measure the head of the water. With all that information, you step back and you sit down with your classmates in your lab group and you say, hey, does that data make sense? Does that agree with the theory and the equations that I learned in the class? Now, to put this in perspective, let's just take a, a little hypothetical discussion about water and civil engineering. Imagine you're designing a bridge. Lots of bridges go over rivers. When it rains, rivers rise, right? So do you think it would be an important design consideration what elevation to place that bridge at to make sure that the water stays under the bridge as the river goes up? Absolutely, we do that all the time. And so we might design around a certain flood, a 100 year event, so many inches of rainfall in a certain period of time. We wanna make sure that when the river goes up, the elevation of the bridge is high enough so it's not impacted. Now I'll step back for a minute the structural engineer would design the bridge. That's a civil engineer. Who predicts how high the water rises? Well, that's a civil engineer too. Now let's think about that for a minute. So maybe you're designing around an event where you get four inches of rain in two hours, say, and you've got 100 miles of river upstream from this bridge, and you've got mountains, and you've got fields, and you've got cities, and impermeable surfaces, and this rain falling, and the tortuous path of the river and different changes in grade, and then step back and say, wow, you know, it's gonna be kind of hard to predict how high, how high the water is gonna be at one particular point when it rains like that. Absolutely, okay? But you start learning about the fundamentals, the physics of water flow in this class right here. And then in senior electives, you take courses in things like surface water hydrology, groundwater hydrology, and even a course titled Open Channel Flow where you learn how to estimate the velocity at which water will flow, how high water will rise as it travels through natural and man-made channels. So these are all different aspects of civil engineering that come into play in the design of almost any project. Now I'd like to close out with, with one thing. Um, I'm sure you all know who Francis Crowe is. 
Probably not, all right? If you'd asked me that uh, a long time ago, I wouldn't have known either. Well, Francis Crow was in charge of the construction of the Hoover Dam. You probably all heard of the Hoover Dam. That's a big one, right? And step back, say, well, he was in charge of construction of the Hoover Dam. He had a university degree. What do you think it was in? Yeah, civil engineering, not surprising. Where did he go to school and get that degree? Right here at the University of Maine. So I come back to my point. We expect great things of all our graduates, and uh, you, you cannot avoid concrete and water. Hoover Dam is a great example of that, and it's a great example of the legacy that you made of civil engineering is, is left behind for the rest of the country. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.